Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the controversy surrounding 7M Films and Miranda Derrick? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, then I'll move to my analysis. 7M Films is a management company that promotes dancers on social media. The idea behind a company like 7M is to bring a number of dancers together under one roof. These dancers perform in a large number of videos and appear in each other's videos. This will create efficiencies which will allow them to make a good living. The management company can arrange better filming locations and offer high production value. The dancers can focus on their craft and not have to worry about finding sponsors, collecting revenue, and paying bills. In many ways, this seems like a good idea. The difficulty with 7M, however, is that they have been accused by a number of people of being cult-like. The owner and CEO of the company is a man named Robert Shin. He is also the founder and pastor of a church called Shekinah Church. This takes us to the story of Miranda Derrick. A dancer named James Derrick, who was managed by the company, entered into a romantic relationship with a woman named Miranda Wilking. Miranda and her sister Melanie Wilking are both dancers who were popular on the platform TikTok. The sisters would post videos of themselves dancing. Sometimes they would include their parents in the videos. James Derrick also appeared in a few. In early 2021, Melanie started appearing alone in the videos. Her sister Miranda was no longer dancing with her. Evidently, Miranda had made some changes in her career. She started new TikTok and Instagram accounts and published dance videos with James Derrick and other dancers represented by 7M. Miranda also changed her look by cutting her hair short. On February 24, 2022, which was Miranda's 25th birthday, Melanie posted an Instagram live video which featured her and her parents speaking directly to the audience about their relationship with Miranda. In this video, Melanie suggested that around the time that Miranda and James became involved with 7M, she lost contact with Miranda. In addition, Miranda and James started attending church and married without informing them. Miranda changed her last name to Derek. Melanie continued by saying that Miranda was part of a religious group and not allowed to speak to her or her parents. Melanie talked about how some time ago she and her sister started attending the church. Initially, Melanie thought it was fun, but then the congregation became demanding of her time. When she wouldn't cancel other plans to attend a service, they didn't invite her to the next one. Eventually, Melanie left the church, but Miranda did not. After this, Miranda started drifting away from the family. Miranda refused to attend her grandfather's funeral in January of 2021, Miranda blocked family members on social media. It seemed like she was transforming into a different person. Melanie's father said they had always hoped that Miranda would come back. Melanie and her parents expressed concerns that Miranda was trapped in a cult. Both Miranda and James issued public statements addressing these allegations. They suggested that they were not in a religious cult. Miranda said that she talked to her family several times in the last year, but she is not communicating with them as frequently because her family disapproved of her decision to be with James Derrick. The reason she missed her grandfather's funeral was because she didn't feel safe with her father and was afraid of being held captive in Michigan. She talked about an alleged incident during which her father blocked her in with his car and her mother was holding her arm as she was explaining to Miranda how she was part of a cult, meaning Miranda was part of a cult. Miranda claimed that her parents called the police, saying that James Derrick kidnapped her. But the police investigated and found that everything was fine. In one of James Derrick's posts, he suggested that Miranda's parents didn't like him because he was black and not well off financially. He went on to say that he was happy with 7M. He's been able to pay off his debts, buy a new vehicle, and move into a nice home. The company is not a religious organization. An attorney for 7M 
implied that Miranda's family was pathetic and trying to create a scandal to get views and attention. In March of 2022, Miranda and Derek traveled to Michigan for a family meeting, but apparently it did not go well. The release of Melanie's video led to some other responses. A number of people related to other 7M dancers have come forward and expressed the same concern as the Wilkings family. They have lost contact with the dancers and would like them to separate from the company. A friend of James Derrick said that James started talking about conspiracy theories not long after joining 7M. One conspiracy theory stated that COVID-19 was not real. Others have noted that the style James Derrick adopted recently for his dance performances is more traditional and conservative than it used to be. As I mentioned, 7M is owned by Robert Shin, who also owns a church. He has not been free of controversy. In 2009, the church was involved in a lawsuit filed by a woman who claimed that they used undue influence, mind control, coercive persuasion, oppression, and other intimidating tactics to get $3.8 million in property and other assets from her. In May of 2011, the judge ruled in favor of Robert Shin and the other defendants. Robert owns several other companies, including one production company that made a film starring Meghan Markle. Robert also teaches people about preparing for the apocalypse, which for some reason feels congruent with producing a film starring Meghan Markle. The name 7M may be a reference to the Seven Mountains Mandate. This is a movement within evangelical Christianity, which states that Christians should be dominant in seven spheres of influence, business, education, entertainment, family, government, media, and religion. They believe they must eradicate demons and witches from those institutions. This just sounds like more demon employment discrimination. One of the most prominent followers of the Seven Mountains Mandate is Paula White, a pastor who is affiliated with Donald Trump. 7M has stated that the M in their name stands for Millennium. They denied any association with the Seven Mountains Mandate. Whether or not there is really any type of affiliation, the website for Robert Shin's church contained a statement I found to be interesting. It reads, quote, We are called to aggressively train God's people to develop the fruit of the Spirit, which are divine characteristics of God himself, so that they may really meet God in the deepest way, unquote. Historically, religion and aggression have not always formed the most helpful combination. Now moving to my analysis. This case features opposing statements. On one side, you have Melanie and her parents saying that Miranda is in a cult. On the other side, you have Miranda and her husband James denying this assertion. There are essentially only two theories that can be generated with the available information. Either Miranda is in a cult or she is not. I suppose there is technically a third option. All this is a hoax done for attention, but that doesn't seem too likely. Therefore, I will leave that theory out of my analysis. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Miranda is involved in a religious cult. I'll start with the factors that support this theory. Miranda suddenly broke off her relationship with her family. She changed her appearance by getting her hair cut, and she married without anybody knowing. These moves came after her attending a new church. Her sister was uncomfortable with this church because they appeared to be controlling. Miranda's new husband, James Derrick, allegedly discussed far-right conspiracy theories with a friend. His dancing style suddenly became very conservative. Miranda and James are both managed by a company that has ties to a church. This church was unsuccessfully sued by a woman claiming that they operated like a cult. Family members and other dancers managed by 7M have expressed concerns about losing contact with their loved ones. And Miranda and James are both young. All things being equal, young people are more likely to be gullible and to be victims of cults. Moving to the factors that contradict this theory, Miranda and James deny being part of a cult. 7M has denied the allegations. Miranda claims that she has had contact with her family over the last year, which of course is different than their story. When considering the evidence, do I think that Miranda and James are wrapped up in a religious cult? In my opinion, it does seem like this is more likely than not, but there is no way to be sure. 
I'm reluctant to dismiss the fact that Melanie and her parents are in agreement about what happened here, and Miranda's behavior did seem to be a departure from tradition. It's important to remember that the influence of a cult can run on a continuum. It's not necessarily something like a headlight that is either on or off. It may be that there is some cult-like influence on them, but they have not completely fallen under the control of some type of cult leader. For the next section of this analysis, I will look at a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, all the dancers with this management company are in a similar situation. They are in an extremely competitive industry where very few performers achieve any type of real success. This type of uncertainty can push people to become very devoted to a group. Even if the dancers don't necessarily believe in the teachings of the company, the church, or whatever it is, they may be under financial pressure to play along. Item number two, some of the classic examples of cults were associated with obvious dangers. For example, the cults run by Jim Jones, David Koresh, and Marshall Applewhite led people to death. Everybody agrees that's an undesirable outcome. Other cults have been hazardous but less dangerous in terms of mortality, like the cults run by Keith Raniere, Bhagwan Rajneesh, or Gwen Shamlin Lara. It required a more thorough investigation to find the wrongdoing with those cult leaders. Modern cults have become much more sophisticated as far as avoiding exposure to criminal liability. With modern cults, it is no longer sufficient to look for obvious violations of the law when investigating them. Many do not technically violate any laws. The manipulative, demanding, and narcissistic behavior is insidious and hazardous, but mostly legal. Item number three, joining a cult is typically a slow-moving process. However, from the perspective of outsiders, individuals get pulled into cults very quickly. So from the family's perspective, the process is fast. This is because secrecy is a part of cult operations. Cult leaders know that family members and friends of their victims will not respond very well to the victims running off with a cult. A lack of transparency is crucial to the survival and growth of a cult. Moving to the last question, how can someone be saved from a cult? Unfortunately, much of the time there is no way to extricate someone from a cult outside of something like kidnapping, which would come with criminal consequences. It takes insight to overcome gullibility, and gaining insight can take years or never happen. That doesn't mean that loved ones should give up. Here are a few thoughts about what can be done. Number one, stay in contact with the victim. Let them know they can always come home. Cults are highly judgmental, so offering a non-judgmental alternative may encourage the person to leave. Number two, try to remain positive in that communication. Hostility and negativity will only drive a victim further away. Emphasize the benefits of being a member of the outside world, the cult-free world. Let the victim know what they are missing. Number three, let the cult leaders know that you're not going away, like you're not going to abandon the loved one. This is largely accomplished by being active with the first two points, continued non-judgmental and positive communication with the victim. Number four, join other families who have lost people to the same cult, or to any cult for that matter. This way resources and information can be shared and more awareness can be brought to the behavior of the cult. Now moving to my final thoughts. No one expects to lose a family member to a cult. People prepare themselves for many obstacles in life, health problems, vehicle collisions, the loss of a job, but few people prepare for dealing with a cult. This is exemplified by the fact that people often carry health insurance, auto insurance, and are protected by unemployment insurance, but nobody has cult insurance. Although many insurance companies seem like cults, that is a different concept. As a side note, Marshall Applewhite, the leader of the Heaven's Gate cult, actually had alien abduction and impregnation insurance on the members. It seems like an idea that an insurance company would come up with. Like the executives are sitting around one day and one of them says, is there any type of insurance that we can offer where there is no probability of a claim? In reality, even if they did have a claim, they wouldn't take a financial loss because they could sell the story of the successful claim 
for millions of dollars. The headline would be something like, Woman Submits Claim After Being Impregnated by a Visitor from Another Galaxy. This reminds me of the 1984 movie Starman with Jeff Bridges. Either way, moving back to the story, there is no such thing as cult insurance. However, cult leaders offer an alternative to other types of insurance in a manner of speaking. They guarantee cult members will avoid all the problems of life if they simply follow the teaching, whatever that is, when in reality, the leaders are providing them an intimate introduction to a world of isolation and suffering. Those are my thoughts on the controversy behind 7M Films and Miranda Derrick. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis to be as intriguing as demons fighting employment discrimination. Thanks for watching.